Hey guys, John V here from Phone Arena. You're watching our in-depth video comparison between the Apple iPhone 5 and of course the Samsung Galaxy S3. It's the battle between the flagships, the best of the best, the cream of the crop. So we're going to compare the two, find out how they stack up against one another, and find out which one's worth your money. With its premium choice materials and construction, we prefer the overall styling of the iPhone 5 versus the Samsung Galaxy S3. Also, when you take into consideration that both handsets are $200, you kind of get a hint there's more luxury to the iPhone 5's design. On top of that, it's more, it's also both skinnier and lighter than the Galaxy S3, while still being more comforting to hold in the hand versus the oversized and sometimes cumbersome feel of the Galaxy S3. However, if we were to drop both devices, we'd imagine that the iPhone 5 would exhibit more damage with its uh, metallic casing versus the all plastic construction of the Galaxy S3. To tell the truth, it just comes down to personal preference as to which display is more preferable between the two. So on one side, you have the larger 4.7 inch HD Super AMOLED display of the Galaxy S3, which has a resolution of 1280 by 720 pixels, versus the 4 inch Retina display of the iPhone, which has a resolution of 1136 by uh, 640 pixels. So even though the iPhone 5 has the uh, higher pixel density, uh, it really is negligible just because they're both able to display a good amount of detail. So we didn't have any issues uh, in that aspect. The other thing here is just the color reproduction. They're vastly different to one another. We like the attraction that we get with the uh, overly saturated color tones with the Super AMOLED display, but they're not that ac as it's not quite as accurate as the iPhone 5's display. It has more natural looking colors than anything else. So uh, it's again a toss up between which one you're going to like better. Nevertheless, you get some really nice wide viewing angles, but as far as outdoor usage, the iPhone 5 has a slight advantage with its higher brightness output. One similarity that these two handsets share is that they both feature physical buttons below the display. One is recess, the other one is raise, but tell you the truth, both are more than tactile. Above their displays, we find the usual items, such as the earpieces. They also have the front-facing cameras. It's a 1.9 megapixel one in the Galaxy S3 versus the 1.3 megapixel one in the iPhone 5. But the Galaxy S3 also features an LED notification light. We're pretty happy with the volume controls of both handsets. It's separated for the iPhone 5 and the uh, Galaxy S3 is a single piece here, but they both offer a good amount of responsiveness when you press them down. And the same can be said about their dedicated power buttons. They both raise and offer a good spring response when pressed. However, they both utilize different connection ports. The Galaxy S3 uses a more favorable um, micro USB port, which you can also get video app functionality with the aid of an MHL adapter, whereas the iPhone 5 it utilizes Apple's new proprietary Lightning docking port. And finally, in the rear of both handsets, we find their 8 megapixel autofocus cameras with LED flashes. Both have the ability to shoot 1080p videos. It's worth noting with the Galaxy S3, you can remove its battery where you can't do that with the iPhone 5. On top of that, there's also a micro SD card slot to expand the Galaxy S3's internal memory. So here we are again with another iOS versus Android comparison. We've said this in the past, uh, so if you prefer something that's easier to understand, uh, intuitive, and just simple, you want to stick with the iOS 6 experience on the iPhone 5, just because it's pretty bare bones uh, with its uh, interface here, but it lacks the personalization, and that's exactly what the Galaxy S3 has to offer with its Samsung TouchWiz Nature UX experience. It's a ton of personalization, of course. The home screens can look very dynamic. Uh, and on top of that, it's just a lot of other things that really make it more complete. Uh, for example, the notifications panel, we like how we have access to different connectivity features and also the brightness setting on there. And as far as the multitasking implementation, they both have uh, their own way of doing it. Uh, and we didn't find one one to be better than the other. They're both pretty much the same, but with the Galaxy S3, the Android experience, and the TouchWords Nature UI on top of it, uh, you have things like Smart Stay, pop-up play features, the S-Beam functionality, and there's a host of other things that really make it a compelling experience. On paper, with the US variants of the Galaxy S3, it's powered by a dual core 1.5 GHz Qualcomm Snapdragon S4 processor with 2 GB of RAM, while the uh, iPhone 5 is powered by a dual core 1 GHz Apple A6 processor with 1 GB of RAM. And honestly, moving about the home screen here, they're both uh, pretty responsive, though the iPhone 5 just has a little bit more fluidity with its performance, but nevertheless, they're still more than responsive. But then again, the UI of the iPhone 5 isn't as intensive compared to the dynamic look of the uh, Galaxy. S3. But as far as other basic operations, opening up applications, uh, web browsing, stuff like that, uh, we didn't have any issues um, as far as performance with both handsets. They both deliver a really nice responsive feel. 
For the majority of core organizer applications on both handsets, they pretty much function in the same manner. So whether you're using things like the, the calculator here, you could tell the layout's pretty much the same on both handsets. Or if you use the clock here too, pretty much the same layout. Or even things like the uh, calendar, I'll uh, quickly show you that here. They pretty much offer the same level of function functionality, but we definitely like the more stylized look of the Galaxy S3's core applications. Thanks to its larger display, the Galaxy S3 has the more spacious layout with its on-screen keyboard than the iPhone 5, but nevertheless, they're both equally as responsive to one another, but it's the autocorrect feature of the iPhone 5 that really helps us out when it comes to typing up messages, but then again, you also have the swipe method with the uh, Galaxy S3, which some people will appreciate. Without a doubt, it's a joy to know that both handsets offer 4G LTE connectivity so you get fast data speeds, but as far as their web browsing performances are concerned, they're pretty much the same. Uh, you could tell here with kinetic scrolling and even things like pinch gestures, their navigational controls are pretty responsive, very fluid, so that's nice for it. But the Galaxy S3 benefits with Adobe Flash support, so you do get that desktop-like experience. Additionally, we like the music players on both handsets just because they offer that balance of functionality and presentation. So if you tilt both handsets to the right, you get that cool looking 3D effect, 3D effect on both devices. It's a carousel on the uh, Galaxy S3 versus color flow mode on the, uh, on the uh, iPhone 5. As far as the audio quality of their speakers, uh, they're pretty much, in, pretty much the same actually. The volume output is strong. There's not one that's really uh, higher than the other. And at the same time, there's no distortion or noise uh, or crackling like that at the highest volume setting. Absolutely, it's far better to watch high definition videos on the Samsung Galaxy S3 thanks to its larger 4.7 inch HD Super AMOLED display. It just comes to life more, again, with the spacious nature of it and top of that, the more vibrant color tones. But the other cool thing that we like about it is the pop-up play feature available with the Galaxy S3 where you could just allow, it, allow the video to play on top of whatever else you're doing. So as far as productivity, you gain that with the Galaxy S3. As we mentioned already, both handsets feature 8 megapixel autofocus cameras. Up top we have the samples for the Galaxy S3 and the bottom with the iPhone 5 and we did check them out on the computer to compare the results. So honestly in outdoor conditions it's hardly a difference between the two just because they produce some very sharp looking photos. A lot of nice details on top of that, good colors, though the Galaxy S3 tends to be a little bit more on the uh, on the saturated side with its uh, color tones. Uh, but the uh, iPhone 5 really excels in lower lighting conditions. We'll show you that really quick here in a sample. So up top is the shot taken in the same conditions, lower lighting conditions. Uh, you could tell the difference here. It's just a lot brighter. You could see more details with the iPhone 5 and that's basically it. Uh, the other thing with though with the Galaxy S3 it just offers a ton more manual controls features and you have other tertiary functions such as buddy share and the bolt and the burst shot mode to really make it an appealing offering still. However, when it comes to their 1080p video recording quality, they are absolutely identical in every single manner. Uh, you have great details, some fluid frame frame rates, uh, 30 frames per, per second capture rate, some natural looking colors on both. You do get auto continuous autofocus with the Galaxy S3, but there's just a slight hint of artifacting when you're panning with the Galaxy S3, but it's very minuscule and doesn't really detract from the overall quality. Also, we didn't have any issues with call quality on both devices, and actually it's quite quite pleasant to tell you the truth. Uh, we're able to have conversations on both events aligned with no issues at all. Good volume tones through earpieces, but the iPhone 5 just has the uh, better noise cancellation feature, especially, especially if you're using the car with the windows down, it cancels out that noise, so our callers hear nothing but our voices. Strictly relying on Sprint's 3G network, just because uh, their LTE connection is not available in our area, we're able to get some average battery life out of both devices. Uh, in fact, uh, they're able to push by a solid day out of normal usage, while heavy usage permits a little bit over 10 hours. But again, if you're in an area that has LTE, you can expect those figures to drop considerably. There's a good reason why these two smartphones are deemed as flagship devices, uh, just because they have a lot to offer, and on top of that, they're, they're, they have this high-end status associated with them. But when we factor everything, we have to give the slight advantage to the Samsung Galaxy S3 as having the total package. As Samsung says, the next big thing is already here, and there's a valid reason why that's the case, um, because when we look past the, the physical looks of both handsets, it's the software experience that really makes the Galaxy S3 compelling. You have things like the S-Beam functionality to 
share a variety of different multimedia content very easily. You have NFC, you also have the smart stay function, and also the host of different shooting modes with its camera to make it a complete package. And it also complements the nice hardware that, that it's packing too. The iPhone 5 is great and all, they both take you know great looking photos and videos, they move very quickly, and they have sharp looking displays, but the, core, the software experience is really what makes uh, it more justifiable to look at the Samsung Galaxy S3. So if you'd like to learn more about both handsets, guys, you can check out our website, phonerena.com. This is John V. Thanks for watching.